Good evening and welcome to tonight's uh, Board of Education meeting. Today is Thursday, September 21st, 2017. May I have the attendance, please? <coughs> Mrs. Bealey? Mrs. Lyford? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Ms. Perry? Here. Mrs. Shea? Here. Ms. Starr? Mr. Vachon? Here. Okay, we please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? There are no adjustments to the agenda tonight. Okay. Um, next is public comment on agenda items. Are there any members of the public that would wish to speak on the agenda item? Seeing none, I mean, yes. I would like to say something before we start. Okay. Uh, it is well known that I have been critical of our delegation to Augusta in the fact that I don't believe that they have supported our school district in the manner that I wish they could. But I got my tax bill this week and the exemption has been doubled. The homestead exemption has been doubled from 10000 to 20000 and my personal taxes have gone down from last year. So I wish to thank them for that effort, at least it's been helpful to all of the taxpayers in Scarborough. Thank you. Okay, on to the workshop. So our one agenda item is to solidify Scarborough Public Schools mission with vision, values, and work. There are feathers and construction paper and we're a little nervous. Explain it away, please. All right, you asked for interactive workshop you're going to get an interactive workshop. So tonight, um, we're going to revisit some of the work that the Leadership Council started this summer during our Leadership Council retreat, and then we're going to build on that work a little bit. So um, solidifying our foundation, what we're going to be thinking about tonight is our mission, our vision, our values, and our goals, and how all of that comes together to create the foundation for the work that we do as a school district. So our agenda tonight is to confirm the mission, a, mission uh, a revision of the mission statement that we have been working on as a leadership council um, and spent much time debating language. Um, I'll share with you kind of how I collected everybody's input um, on our final day of the retreat and then I will present to you a statement for confirmation, I hope, and acceptance. Um, then we'll also look at the vision statement that was sent to you last night or the night before. Um, again, this, there has been uh, just some additions to this, not many changes to the student-centered vision statement, um, but we'll look closely at that and hopefully confirm that vision statement. And then we will um, engage in a hands-on activity where we will work to identify our core values and beliefs. And um, all of this work is important. Um, for us to revisit each year, as we grow and change as an organization, it's always a healthy practice to check back with ourselves and find out how, how are we doing in taking these things and putting them into practice and actually utilizing our mission and our vision and our values to drive our work. And we'll talk more specifically about that. The goal is also um, to be able to have our best version of these things that we will then pass over to a group that we're working with to um, work on branding our district and um, streamlining both the images that we use to represent the district but also the language that we use to represent the district so that as we develop more um, community business partnerships that we can share those branding guidelines with our partners and we can work collaboratively with others but also really getting clear on our communication strategies and making sure that um, folks know what we're about and what we do here in Scarborough Public School District. So it's all, this is a step towards that bigger work <coughs> that we'll be doing. So, 
not really showing up. Um, you'll remember this slide from the beginning of the school year where we talked about these big buckets of work that we're doing this year, um, really honing in on what is the work that we do uh, around safe and inclusive schools for all of our staff and our students. Of course, we have the proficiency-based education work that's going on, um, and that's the key component this year, the major initiative, I should say, this year um, in our student learning system. We're continuing to grow and enhance our professional learning system through the work that we do in our professional learning teams. Um, and the principals and directors have already started to kick that work off this year. And then also looking at um, or continuing to implement and enhance our PEPG system, which is our professional educator growth system, and this is the evaluation system that we use, um, not just to evaluate teachers, but more to give teachers feedback so that they can always be um, growing and improving their practice. And then a big initiative with bringing on um, and kind of redefining, I should say, existing roles within the district to, to bring on the leadership of the improvement strategist to help us improve our practices using data. And then, of course, um, looking at how do we best communicate and build those community partnerships. And like we talked about at the beginning of the school year, all of this work is really intertwined and interconnected. Um, so it's, it's hard sometimes to think of these things in isolation. And this evening, the work that we're doing is really the work that supports all of this. And so when we talked about this with our staff, in the beginning of the school year, we also talked about how does this, how do the, does the current work that's on the table before us connect to those bigger long range goals? So it was our 18 month, um, they were our 18 month goals and then they were our 24 month goals and now they're just the work. Like that is just the goals that we are doing. They're long range, um, they're intentionally broad and aspirational and so we're always going to be continuing and striving towards those things. So um, I always like to create the biggest run-on sentence ever when I try to write an objective. So here's my attempt to <laughs> clarify for you what our purpose is tonight. Um, so tonight we will be identifying a core belief or value of each of us, the school board and the leadership council, in order to have a conversation that will allow us to explore how to make the district's core values visible and present in our decision making and all of the work that we do with our with our staff and also um, with the school board. And of course, all of this is to the end of how do we increase student outcomes, right? So we're doing this work in order to ensure that we're always working toward improving our students' performance. So here's the foundation of our work, and I use this metaphor. This isn't a metaphor that I made up, but that I borrowed um, some, from some thought leaders in education who talk about this as the foundation of our work. And when we think about that table, we think about the importance of having a table that has four stable legs that all rest on the ground at the same time so that you don't have that wobbly table. And so each leg of our table is this work that we're talking about tonight, the mission. Why do we exist as an organization? The vision. What type of school district do we hope to become? Our values. What are our beliefs and our collective commitments as we work towards that vision? And then, of course, the goals. What are the incremental steps that we're going to take to ensure that that vision becomes a reality and to ensure that we're living our mission each and every day? And so you may remember me sharing this picture this summer as we were trying to organize our work. We started thinking about how do we clarify this for our staff so they can see the interconnectedness. And that was the first image that um, I shared with you, kind of came from this scratchy mess here on the whiteboard in our conference room. And I was looking for evidence of these things in our district, and I had no trouble finding evidence of our mission. Um, we had, you know, I had been using a slide every time I speak to you to kind of remind us of why we exist, but then we have school board policies that also reinforce that mission. Um, the school board has a clear philosophy around education, and so that's a, a policy that we had in place. And then our mission, the leadership team that sits here in this room spent lots of time um, over the last couple of years developing that student-centered se student vision um, and really cultivating the student-centered learning system that we have here in Scarborough. And so there was, it was easy to find evidence of that vision and who we, what we were trying to become. 
we had the 24 month plan. We talked about you know going through a big strategic planning process. Um, but knowing that the town was going through a big stri strategic planning process with a comprehensive plan, um, one of my worries was that it would be a competing priority. Um, and also, you know, really, some of our goals are dependent upon what the capacity of the town is. So I think that that's information that will inform our work moving forward. Um, so we have maintained the goals. The, big, the four big goals um, throughout our work this year. The things that are changing are the strategic actions that each phase level um, is defining underneath. And that's, that's normal practice here in Scarborough. That's not something new or different. But you can see there, there's a big gaping hole. Um, I could not find clear evidence. I had anecdotal evidence from conversations and from observations of what the values were in Scarborough Public Schools. But we haven't yet taken the time to solidify that and put it to paper and to commit to it. And so that's the work that we're going to start to do tonight. And so this is the mission that I um, had been sharing with all of you all of last year. Um, I believe this is the mission of every single public school anywhere. Um, that this is why public schools exist, to ensure high levels of learning for each and every student. Therefore, we as the leaders, as the teachers, as the adults in the community have to do whatever it takes to bring all students to their full potential and to help them realize that they matter. Um, to me, that's the essence of the work that we do. But that was just my thoughts in isolation. We hadn't had a chance as a whole leadership team to add to that and to define that and to have ownership of that. And so we went through several iterations over the summer. Um, and one of the things that I did, um, oh, I'm not in my computer. One of the things that I did was took from the leadership team several, on our final day, after many discussions around the mission, you all remember that, um, I asked them to, if you were going to write the mission today, what would it look like? And I asked them to write out the mission statement. Um, and then we did a series of passings around where they were supposed to underline a few words. Some people circled all the words. Some people underlined more than a few words. Um, but to underline a few words that they felt absolutely had to be incorporated in our mission statement. And we were trying to get it down to one sentence. Um, and so it's a long sentence. But what I did was I literally went through and tallied the words that were circled. And there were a few, the, the top five things that, um, that had the most tallies were fundamental purpose, um, safe and inclusive school, safe and inclusive, um, empowered, lifelong learner, and each and every student. Each and every student by far was the most um, circled word in that process. It was really important to us that we really had that inclusivity mindset. And when we say all, we felt like all could be overly generalized. And so we wanted to be so specific that we were saying each and every student in Scarborough. And so um, I can share that tally sheet with you if you want the supporting evidence. <laughs> Um, so this is what, uh, I, I actually had four drafts last night, and today I said, no, that'll just lead us right back to where we were with liking parts of this and parts of that. So I present this before you to get your input and see what you think about this statement. The fundamental purpose of the Scarborough Public Schools is to provide a safe and inclusive learning environment where each and every student is empowered to be a resilient, lifelong learner who is prepared to engage as a contributing member of society. And there's my typo for the night. So take a minute, read that to yourself. Um, this is a workshop, although I'm doing a little mini presentation here, I, I do want it to be a dialogue. So feel free to turn and talk to the person next to you or around you or get up and move to be close to someone if you're not. Um, what do you think about this? Does this capture why we exist here in the Scarborough Public Schools? Go ahead and take a minute or two to do that. More importantly, Thomas, how are we doing it? I'll move over now. Yeah. Yeah. Come, Come be Joanne. Come, 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 Come over. There you go. Um, um, I like this each and every because it's each 
I as an individual that, and every as the group. <coughs> on the topic of focus. Does that make um, all difference? Along with being a resilient lifelong man, it also be a focus. From all that work that we Okay, so um, I heard there might be a dangling modifier in this sentence. I don't even know what that means, but um, it sounds like <laughs> there's a need to maybe make it two sentences or um, help us refine it a little bit further, which I fully anticipated. Um, but does it, does it have the essence of what we want to capture here? Did anyone feel like there was something that was just missing? We need to make sure we put this in there as well. Exclamation point. An exclamation point. Thomas has an addition. Thomas? Um, I, I felt that along with a resilient and like long, I thought that it was really important to have the word focus. Um, because um, in terms of paying, if paying attention and focusing on what path learners want to go down. Having focus in, is an important aspect of learning, at least in my mind. Definitely, definitely. Anything else we think we should add? I'm just capturing this in the notes here. Julie, I don't think we focus enough as, as parents, teachers, students on being active listeners. Okay. Active. So is that something we feel should be added into our mission statement or? I don't know. That's okay. just my contribution, my suggestion. Okay. I can elaborate on why when it's appropriate. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about this mission statement. We're going to move into the vision statement. And some of these things might come up in the values statement that you're going to be generating. So you had your homework to be thinking about and coming pre be prepared for that. Um, so be keeping these things in mind. And if you didn't get a chance to say it, we'll have some opportunities throughout the workshop to, to hear more voices. Um, so we're not, we're not putting a stamp on this and saying this is the mission statement. There's some uh, grammatical work that might need to be done and we'll think about how we can incorporate Thomas's suggestion to that. So when it comes to our student-centered vision, now the vision, the mission's why we exist. It's why we get out of bed every morning. It's why we come here. And then the vision is that long-range goal that you know every decision we make every improvement that we make should be taking us one step closer toward that vision statement or that, that vision that we have. And so I grabbed some of the language from our vision statement and included it here. Um, at the very top it says, Scarborough Public Schools are committed to all students becoming college, career, and civic ready through student-centered learning. 
And then we define this a little further, saying that using our student-centered learning focus, decisions in planning, instruction, and in the continuous improvement of our schools are made with students' needs and interests as our primary consideration. And as we worked on this vision statement and we talked about what it says and what it means and how it guides our work and our decision making, we also noticed that there was a large group of critical players missing from the list. So we have, um, I've adjusted the order for your um, review today. So the students, of course, being first. And then we have these specific statements that are connected to the student's role in making this vision a reality. And then we put our teachers second, and there's specific statements to our, to our teachers, like a call to action for our teachers to making this vision a reality. And then, of course, parents and community. And then the part that we added was the essential operations. We also called it critical operations, but these are all of the support staff that make the work that we do with our students for our students possible. And they really captured this bullet um, that the essential operations provide the environment and infrastructure to make effective teaching and learning possible. And so if you took each one of these critical roles, IT, school nutrition, custodians, maintenance, bus drivers, central office staff, nurses, building ed techs, all of these people are absolutely essential in ensuring that the teachers can meet their obligations of creating engaging, inclusive environments that are safe for students to take risks, um, that the teachers can listen to students' voices, their ideas, their wonders, and their concerns every day, um, but also that students can show what they know, so that students can know their own interests and strengths and can advocate for themselves, and that they can feel comfortable and confident. Um, all of these things are all of these things are only possible when we have that critical support from our essential operations. And then, of course, the leaders, both formal and informal leaders, but in this case, we're talking specifically about our formal leaders, the principals, assistant principals, um, building administrative leads, central office administrators, the school board, of course. Um, and so that language hasn't changed. We just defined it a little bit for the maybe folks who aren't in the schools and don't know what we mean by this, some of this language. Um, and so what I'm going to ask us to do is um, stand up and actually come around in the circle. And I want you to chat with someone who you haven't chatted with yet about this vision statement. Uh, it's, there's a lot of language to it. I captured kind of the overarching essence up here on the slide. But just grab your vision statement. There's extra copies up front if you need one. And grab, connect with someone who you haven't spoke with yet and just reflect on this statement. I like that you 
into some of the conversations as I was working my way around and our hope was that we would have a mic that we'd be able to pass so everybody could be heard in the conversation. Um, unfortunately, we don't, oh, we do have it. Oh, all right then. All right. Oh, this is even better. All right. So. Um, I, I was listening in and I was hearing a few things as I was working around your conversations. Um, one suggestion that I heard was instead of saying Scarborough Public Schools, um, like each individual school, it could, be, it could say Scarborough Public School District is committed to. Um, another thing that I heard was, hey, great addition by adding the essential operations. We really like that and being more inclusive of all the staff, but what about the other folks who have an impact on our students, like our coaches, like our club advisors, like our um, ed techs, like our guidance counselors and our social workers. And so, you know, that's always the risk when you start listing. You don't want to forget anybody, right? Um, and so I think that uh, there's some work that we could do around the language because this is, this is probably the wordiest vision I've ever seen. Um, but detailed, and I think that's good supporting information. And really what we want to get to is a place where, like, what's going to be that thing that everyone in our staff knows we're all about? So I think it comes down to, like, the first sentence or the first two sentences that we have up there about the fact that we're student-centered. Um, and then we started talking about taglines, and this is something that we talked about at Leadership Council, too, right? We looked even at some other districts who will say, like, you know, students first or engaging all or so maybe we want to kind of come up with a tagline. Dylan, one of our students, said, this is a really great, come on in, um, this is a really, this, is, this should almost be on everything that we publish, like at the bottom of the page or at the top of the page, this Scarborough Public Schools are committed to becoming, to all students becoming college, career, and civic ready through student-centered learning. Um, and that's kind of a mouthful, right? But basically we are saying students first, or all students first, or something like that, each and every student first. Uh, you can't obviously speak for the whole town, but I don't know who can. But why wouldn't we just say Scarborough is committed to all students becoming college, 
career and civic ready because we've assigned in this vision jobs for the community members. So I would just cut right to it and say Scarborough is committed to it. Any other comments you'd like to add? So uh, Monique pointed out to uh, Thomas and I that on, if you look at the bottom of the sheet, we're not sure, but we're thinking that actively communicate with the school and involve themselves in school and community. Was that originally up with parents and community, those two bullets? So at the bottom where it says actively communicate with the school and then involve themselves in the school community, we think maybe that was with parents and community to begin with. It kind of looks like um, it kind of looks like that fits there, and so Thomas and I agreed with Monique when she pointed that out. Well, you were the creator of that, so I would say yes. Thank you. One of the things that we wondered about was the presentation format of this, because there is so much on a page. Would we be better served to think about it in terms of being an infographic, um, you know, something that might be eye-catching um, and might get more people apt to read it? Another question was, like, who's the audience? Where does this get stored? How do we use it? And so this is the original version of this. Um, where those two bullets are in the right spot is on our website. Um, but the goal is that we're trying to, by doing this refinement, we're trying to bring all of this forward more. And our partnership with the company who's helping us with our branding, um, basically they're gonna, we're going to give them our best work and they're going to help us make it really visually pleasing and easy to understand. So um, that's a skill that I don't personally have. So we're going to tap into some experts, although some of you do have that skill. Um, but that's good, all good feedback, right? Um, and where are we going to put it? And how is it when you come to Scarborough Public Schools website, this stuff stands out? And it's right up there up front and says, this is what we're about, why we exist, this is who we're trying to become. And then next, this is what we believe in. And therefore, we commit to these things. So we're, that's, we're getting to that next. Anyone else want to add some thoughts? Todd? <laughs> We um, spoke specifically to the career uh, portion of the statement where we often think that, um, and David made the point that the first question to a senior in the school system as they're approaching graduation is, where are you going to college? And as the overseer of a essential operation that is made up primarily of people who didn't go to college and yet are important uh, members of society contributing to the community, uh, we thought it was important to sort of make sure that the career portion of our um, vision uh, remains intact and um, is acknowledged more fully, perhaps. I caught, captured it all, but. We agreed also that a major impediment may be the focus of the parents. The parents are not ready to accept a student who says they want to be a mechanic. That they would rather do something hands-on than go to college. And the other thing we talked about was the fact that they hang their heads sometimes when they say they're going to USM or they're going to Orono when their friends are going to Bowdoin or Harvard or Northeastern or even Southern Cal. So we need to make all of their choices important to them and to us, but especially the parents. Anyone else want to add to that? You just made me think last night on NPR, I was listening to an interview by a young woman who created the first all-female mechanic shop. Mm -hmm. So she, I mean, I'm pretty sure she's going to be quite successful. And by the way, you can get your hair and nails done while you wait for your oil change. So all women, so there are some men who, they don't discriminate, there are some men that work there, but it's all owned and run by women. First one, just now, 
that's amazing to me. So that just rethinking the way we think about what success is, redefining these things. Uh, Carrie and I had a conversation that I think goes sort of to that point about, um, well, first of all, we took a look at this and we tried really hard to look at it through the lens of not who we are, <laughs> not engaged in the schools, maybe a parent reading something like this for the first time or a community member reading this for the first time. Um, is it, you know, is it too jargony? Do we know what we're trying to say? Does it make sense? And do I want my child to be part of this experience? And so one of the things we noticed um, was you, you go right to the top and you see college, career, and civic ready, and we were thinking about a lot of the things that Todd just said. Um, but then when you get to the student bullets, it feels as though um, there's a lot about process, a lot about how to learn, but there's not a lot about outcomes. And I don't know whether they really belong there, but it felt like there could be one more bullet. Um, we struggled with language, but something about that students will, at the end, be able to identify where they fit in the community or be able to choose a pathway that suits them or um, be able to realize that there are resources for them to find their own dream. Yeah, so yesterday on Twitter I saw a quote that said, um, you know, not only is it important for students to be college and career ready, it's important for them to know that they matter. And so I think that's kind of along the same lines of what you're saying. It's like how do we create that sense of importance and value? Because it takes, it takes a village, which is a good transition for what we're going to do this afternoon. Is there any other, or this evening, is there any other thoughts you want to add about the work that we need to do with our mission and our vision? So what, what I will do, I, you're really making me think, Kate, like how important it is to take this to maybe some of our club advisors at the high school or some of our um, student leaders at the middle school in K-5 to say like kind of what do you think, what do you think we need to be here in Scarborough? What's the type of school that you want us to become? And get some student input into some of these bullets that we've, you know, started. And I think the important part of this work is to know that it's something that we're always going to revisit. Like, yeah, we're putting it on paper and we're like pledging to these things, but then we're also saying we're never done, so we're always going to be improving and growing in this work, right? Any other thoughts you'd like to add? My only addition is really about the origin of the document. The document surfaced as a result of conversations with all staff across the entire district. Um, and they produced their questions, what does student-centered learning look like to you? And all staff engaged in that activity um, at faculty meetings two or three years ago, and that's where this, this draft um, surfaced. Thank you, Monique. Okay, are you guys ready to have some fun? All right, I'm going to share with you um, a protocol to help us begin to establish our core values. And I started thinking about how do you actually establish core values? And part of this was like reflecting on um, the process that it takes to come up with just like one sentence for our mission statement. Or, you know, I think we could probably look at this document again tomorrow, the vision statement, and have 15 new ideas of how we could make it even better. And so I thought, well, that would probably happen too with our core values because there's so much that I know that I believe about education, um, and there's so much that those, those beliefs then drive much of my commitment to public education. And so I thought this is kind of funny because you could hire somebody to come in and help you do this stuff, right? People actually make a living out of facilitating this. Um, and this, this cartoon that I found says, thought leaders, you will not discover your core values during the $99 seminar at the Holiday Inn. So we're not going to do that. We're not going to bring somebody in to tell us what our core values are. Um, and then I thought, well, maybe I'd send you some samples, and then you could look what other districts came up with. But I thought, well, then that would be their values. And whenever you read them, they all always sound good, but they really need to be our core values. So this guy's wanted for stealing ideas outside of his industry or core values from another district. 
So instead, I thought I would bring you through this activity that I was introduced to from Monique, um, our Director of Curriculum and Instruction. I said I really wanted it to be interactive and something, you know, fun and different than what we would do than just sit around with chart paper and post-its because we do that all the time in public education. Um, so we're going to do this hands-on activity. I gathered all these supplies from the Pleasant Hill Art Room yesterday and some from the trunk of my car. Um, so we have lots of materials for you to choose from, but before we get to what you're going to do with those, we have to kind of ground ourselves and what is it that core values are about. So this is supposed to be what matters most to us and therefore we must commit to doing what in order to ensure that that happens, right? So when we think about our values, we're thinking about what is it that we can say that will reflect what we believe in deeply about education? We have to make sure that these values will guide and drive our behavior so it doesn't really matter um, if we put really nice statements on paper if, they don't, if, it, if we just go on doing what we've always done or um, unless it aligns to those values, of course, right? But we want to have these statements, these commitments that then drive our behavior to ensure that our mission is a reality and that we're striving toward our vision, right? And so our values also must define our roles and enable us to deliver. It's a bonus night. You get to have multiple typos. Um, student success. And our values will inspire action and set us apart from other districts. So that's why I thought it was really important that we didn't just go and borrow some from other districts. That's what sets them apart, right? That's what makes their district unique. We want our values to set us apart and to define who we are and inspire our actions and guide our behaviors. Right? So the first thing that I want you to do um, is do you, there's materials on the table. There should be, are there post um, index cards, Cal? On the index cards, I want you to just reflect on and write a description of a core value or belief that you hold dear and that is related to your work in the Scarborough Public School District. So whether you're a parent, whether you're a school board member, whether you're a director, an assistant director, a principal, an assistant principal, um, a student, reflect on and write a description of a core belief or value that you hold dear and that is related to your work specifically with the school district. I'm just going to give you about three to five minutes to do that quietly and individually. And you're going to get a chance to share your ideas with others. So right now, just use this moment to really be reflective and write a description of a core belief or value that you hold dear and that is related to your work in the district.
that you've been waiting for. We're going to use all of these materials. You'll notice that we have this red table in the middle. This is not a workspace. The workspaces are on the side here. If you need to spread out and use some of the area up here, you could do that as well. But um, you're going to independently be working on a little project. So you'll see that in these buckets, there's everything from I think this stuff is called to tape. There's modeling clay, beads, buttons, crayons, stickers, shells, pom poms, all of the greatest fun crafting. Um, thanks to Pleasant Hill for donating the supplies. We'll return whatever we don't use. Um, so, what you're going to do now is you're going to independently create a visual to represent your core beliefs that you just wrote on your paper. So everyone will need one of these. This is sort of your base that you're building on. Um, you can stick things to this if you'd like, or you don't have to stick things to this. But the important thing is going to be that you can transport your model to a chair when you're done. Okay? So you're going to have about 20 minutes or so, judging on how the group is. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll see how it's going. We'll see how it's going. But then when you're done, you're going to be able to pick your um, core value model up and you're going to take it over to your seat. Don't sit on it. Um, just set it on your seat. Okay? So does it have any words on it? It could have some words on it. There's some stickers that in the shape of letters if you'd like. So whatever you need to do to represent your core value. Okay? So the only limit is that it must be portable and that about that size. But you could use multiple pieces if you feel like you could still move it around. So I know that for some of you, this is pushing you outside of your comfort zone, right? <laughs> that's my intention tonight. This is pushing me out of my comfort zone, too. I feel like that's part of my job as your superintendent. It's a slide to not here. But you yeah. <laughs> 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 um, But it's my seriously, it's my job to nudge you and get you to try new things, right? So when everyone's done creating their visual model for your core beliefs, then this is why it's called it Take the Village. One by one, at your will, when the mood strikes you, you'll bring your creation to the village, to Scarborough, and you'll place it on this table and you'll tell us about your core value and about the symbolism that you created with your piece of art. Okay? And then someone else will go when they're ready. So for those of you who want to take a little time and see some examples, you can. Those of you who are risk takers and ready to go, you can volunteer to go first. No pressure, but everyone will, by the end, however long it takes, <laughs> put their creation on the table and share it with the group. I'll and remind then, school board members there's only four of us, so we all have to stay or we lose a quorum. So. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions about what you're going to do? Go ahead and get started. We know what we're going to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. They're on. Oh, shoot, really? Yeah. I really need to. Do uh, I'll get some from upstairs. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh,
modeling clay.
Yeah, we could have done this all with just a crayon, right? Very interesting, Allison. I can't wait to hear you. I can't wait to hear you. That's abstract, already. Here we go. That's the only thing you can ever find. I'm like way out of the box right now.
takes a village and the purpose of this protocol is to help us define our values as an organization as the Scarborough Public Schools you spent some time tapping into your create creative minds to create a visual model for that value or that belief that you wrote down on your paper before we started and so I put this African proverb up here. We've all heard it. I hear people talk about this all the time. It takes a village. And so now we're going to build our village of core values here on this red tablecloth. So whenever you're ready, you can step right up. I'm just going to add, I'm going to, I'm going to pass you the mic so that you can then tell us what your your core belief or your value is and then you'll put it right on the table here or you can put it on the table and talk and then you'll hand it to the next person. I'm a little worried my glue is going to slide if I hold it up too much but do an angle. So my word that I kept coming back to is engagement that for students to be successful they need to be engaged in their own learning as represented by the star and the hippo there in the center. They have to be engaged in their own learning and setting their own goals and paths for the future engage with peers and engage with their teachers and educators who are the elephants up in this corner who are also engaging with students, helping them on their path what else do I write? Um, and engaging with each other and growing professionally and then engaging with the community and then the community has to engage with the students and the educators that have been seeing over here um, and how and what can they do to contribute to the success of the Hippo Star student and their future to find something that they love and then they go away and then there's a beautiful butterfly <laughs> because they all they all see I can write words and then I found props to go with it but everyone has to be working together it's the community and the educators and the students it's a team of okay, heroes and yeah. heroes Next. <laughs> I, can, I can say anything. I can make whatever it works. Good afternoon. My name is Jackie Perry. <laughs> yep. And my core value is quite simple. All ideas are of value. And that's one of those idea things, you know? <laughs> well, it's bad. It's the truth. <laughs> Uh, mine was passionate and it's just a lot of colors it's a lot of craziness sometimes but it's all important and so I felt like um, those of us that have been at meetings with me know that I'm passionate so did you actually read what you said oh yes stealing my work um, I said passionate. I believe deeply in working hard for our, school, our students. We as adults should be advocating and doing all that we can for our youngest citizens. And then I had to spell it to make sure I was spelling it correctly because I didn't want any errors. For my personal value, I had that it's important to promote students having personal learning goals that suit their interests and guide what they want to be in the future. So you can see the personal learning, learning goals in the center in the blue circle. Thank you. Um, I'm hoping nothing falls off. And you have all this bad red stuff around it, and you want it to go up. 
to a bright future. Okay, mine was more than one word. Oh, I'm Hillary Durgan. I didn't come on time. I'm very sorry. Um, so my value is um, that I think all children deserve equal chances at success. Um, so here's the successful children in our school system. And then here's, I just wrote some words of all the um, things that our, our schools and teachers and staff can offer our children to help them on the path to success. They're soaking it in. Do you want my card? Remember, if there's another value that's similar to yours, you could place yours near that value. And that's exactly what I'm doing. I, I stepped out of my comfort zone and went with three different mediums instead of a traditional one medium approach. And I even busted out into 3D up in the corner. My, uh, the phrase that always comes to mind for me when I do these sorts of activities and for 28 years it's always been the same and that is reaching and teaching all students. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mike. All right, so I wrote in a similar vein that all children are included, valued, and given what they need to learn. And I believe that uh, K2 is the foundation for all learning, and the kids wouldn't be where they are at the other levels without us. So that's why I made mine flat and not 3D. It was on purpose, kind of. Uh, and so, uh, so I have... I have these little, I have the word welcome, we're happy you are here, and then um, children that have different needs and different seating arrangements and different, different accommodations and accessories. So, different they're funny. Yes, they're all different. I think it's time to lower the bar here on the artistic value of our uh, arrangements. <laughs> Here to make everybody else feel good about their art tonight. <laughs> As you can see, uh, my theme was also in the all categories, so my uh, value is that every student has meaningful, engaging experiences with the support they need to access those opportunities. So I had um, a little bit of everything there. Oh, yeah. Now, there you go. Because what was interesting is Chris, Chris and I were not in the same group, and I walked over and I looked and said, oh my gosh, we did the same thing. So um, my belief is in uh, the... <laughs> well, both are abstract art. <laughs> but the, uh, the importance of the individual in fair and equitable practices in an inclusive environment. Very similar. Very nice. So Allison and I were chatting and we had similar beliefs. So I believe in an inclusive environment for all learners. All learners matter and all learners will grow. So I'm not just thinking about the students but the adults also. That was mine. I used birds too. So my core value or belief was citizenship. And so this little bird in the center has decided to take a stand and do something and not be a passive, can't be a passive onlooker. You want to engage in the process. And so this yarn going throughout represents both um, engaging other people in the community, other little birds, and also trying to improve things in your community. And the influence goes right off the paper. You don't know <laughs> where it's going to end. <laughs> Thanks. Um, mine is simple, that I value the joy of learning and everything that we can do to nurture the joy of learning in our students and staff. And it goes off the page, too. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In my role, I um, value um, 
in factors in learning. And so it's not the stuff, it's not the curriculum, it's not the numbers of students, it's not even the facilities, and sorry, Jen, but it's not even the devices. The most important factor in student learning and improving learning is the teacher. Okay, mine all hinges on my pipe cleaner staying upright there. Okay. With support and belief and high expectations, anyone can reach high. Great heights. I think my glue is dry now. I used a lot of tape, too, because I got mad skills. Um, I have a lot of words because I'm a big word person. Oop, thanks, Julie. I believe that everyone, and I work mostly with adults, but everyone deserves my compassionate attention and needs to be heard without judgment. So for students, I felt that meant that you meet them where they are and you let them know they matter. So mine's all about connections, heart to heart, and ideas and thoughts and love passing back and forth. All right, so my theme is pretty similar. So I've got my people here. And if you don't notice, they all have really big hearts. And um, so my theme is that when we build and maintain relationships with others, then we can work collaboratively. So mine is a little bit symbolic because what I believe is that every child is capable of learning and growing and that we need to teach them well and let them lead the way. Okay, I'm nervous to hold mine up because we had some glue hogs in our group and I don't know if it's like going to stay together. Mine was equitable access to technology to provide a level playing field for learning in a global community. So here's my little earth, my little people. They have sort of scary eyes, sorry. And they have little ideas that are circling the globe. And it didn't fall apart. So my word was uh, inclusivity, and I, at the school, I'm the president of both the Gender and Sexuality Alliance and Civil Rights teams, so um, mine revolved around kind of diversity in schools. So I have kind of sexual orientation, race, gender, culture, and religion, and how they're all connected. Mine's not nearly as creative, but... <laughs> I'm feeling judged as I walk up. So this is the first time, I, I kid you not, that I've ever done artwork. So <laughs> above all else, our relationships define who we are and how we live. So build and nurture great relationships and you will have a successful life. So I attempted to put together two very diverse individuals with funky hair I wish I had and anyhow, those are two people building a relationship and Please don't judge me. <laughs> and after you did relationships, I knew it was. Follow my county cohort. Uh, I think all of you know that I have a rather unique job in this district. So, uh, and I'm not creative either. So, my uh, little drawing is a set of helping hands for service. And my core of it belief is to provide <coughs> service to people or an organization or both in order to help make things better. Oh, yeah, I can be a pretty brutal editor, too. Watch out. So my artwork is of all different shapes and sizes and all different colors. And my belief is that all of our students deserve the right to go to a school where 
they are included and, in, and are safe. I was not a good rule follower, so I didn't write. Uh, I said that I was a, I'm a big believer in teams, and I think that we can make a difference together um, in our community and around our world. Jen, how much is that to replace? So, um, as, as your facilitator, I did not want to get distracted and lose track of time in creating a visual. However, I did write a value statement in the beginning when we were um, writing. So I wrote, um, I value diversity and inclusion and commit to ensuring access and inclusion for each and every person in our district. And that's a theme that I heard a lot in our conversation this evening. So the first thing I want to do before we wrap up with a couple of questions is um, to thank all of you for taking a risk. I acknowledge that this could put you outside of your comfort zone for some, and to do it in a really public way um, is, a, is a huge risk. So I thank you for doing that in the name of our students and um, really solidifying that foundation so we can ensure that we continue to provide the world-class education that we know our students deserve. So thank you for that. Give yourselves a hand for that good work. And then I have the next part of this protocol is called the conversation. And um, there's three questions. Because of the size of our group, I'm going to kind of split it up. Normally, I would want everyone to be able to have a voice and to be able to pass the mic and give you all a chance to answer all three questions. Um, but just given the time and um, the, the size of the group, we're going to divide the three questions. So the first question is, what core values or beliefs emerged as themes in our village this evening? And I'll pass the mic to whoever, after a minute of thinking, would like to answer that first. What core values and or beliefs, those two words are sometimes used synonymously or interchangeably, emerged as themes in our village? The notion of all. Um, I felt like there was a lot of interpersonal relationship themes um, said in a lot of different ways, but that the relationships matter with the adults and the students. Um, I also thought there were a few that um, focused on engagement, uh, talking about the joy of learning and um, uh, having students be again engaged in what they're doing. I heard a lot about inclusion and safety. You stole my answer. <laughs> I was going to say I heard there were a lot of different ways of saying it, but so many of them talked about including, you know, inclusiveness, I guess, in, in many different ways. Um, I felt that there were some <coughs> uh, that focused on um, how, where uh, education comes from. I thought a lot of them dealt with um, connectedness and working together. Just no one can learn on their own. You have to have other people with you. Yeah. Similarly, I hear about a lot of scaffolding and support and everything that happens underneath with the student up on top, you know, with everything, all of us and the community supporting them. Um, I think there was growth. It, it, it wasn't one of the, the actual words that people used, but I think um, there were aspects of growth showing students leading the way, students taking initiative into their own learning. So growth. 
So the next question is using the creations in front of you as data, what do you now know about our district leadership that you didn't know before? <laughs> so I'll just read that again. Using the creations as data, what do you now know about our district leadership that you didn't know before this evening? So the first question, <laughs> I uh, heard the theme of individualized within the concept of all. Transitioning to our second question, <laughs> um, I, I knew already that um, this group was really focused on relationships and inclusion and all means all. I am impressed by the uh, ability to quickly use symbolism, though, and, and think in a creative and abstract way about how to represent that. Um, I think, I mean, for the second question, that we, I learned at least, that the district leadership all has very similar opinions that just might be, I don't know, presented differently. beginning to seem redundant, but uh, yeah, I think one thing that I did know is that everybody cared, and yet to hear everybody say it out loud in their own way with the symbolism was, was really nice. I also see passion for their work and the joy in what they do. I was happy to see a focus on equity on making sure that kind of everybody had a level playing field. And that's something that I think we all think about, but I don't think we all verbalize on a regular basis. I think in addition to the passion, I noticed the compassion as well. Are we going to transition or? No, no, I'm cool. I just want you to do what you do to Allison. <laughs> she was ready to go and then you're like, all right, the next one is. So this goes back to the relationships theme that, um, that Kate brought out, but I think something that's essential is the sense of humor. I think the Leadership Council, everybody here, board members, students, have a great sense of humor. If you don't have a good sense of humor and you can't laugh at yourself and support everybody else while you kid around, you can't have great relationships, and that's what we do with our students all the time, too. So I think sense of humor is a great um, way to break down when you feel uncomfortable about something or you're unsure uh, or I just think sense of humor was prevalent and it was it's a key to building great relationships I think all right the last question is what would it take for us let me just clarify that for you <laughs> <laughs> what would it take for us as a group to have these core values visible and present in the work that we do. So I'll repeat that again. What would it take for us as a group to have these core values that we just articulated um, visible and present in the work that we do together? Or you could answer one of the other two previous questions. I, mean, I, I think that's tough because one of the things that I sensed was a passion for wanting to make a difference in kids' lives. And I think that people in their presentations reflected their passion. So I think it's just inherent in people. Um, those those values that they expressed, and so I don't know um, I don't know if you if you collectively can demonstrate that um, in a in a graphic way. Um, I think it's just I think th those things that came out today 
are inherent in what people believe, and so I think they live it each day. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's it's visible in the decisions you make and the conversations you have, and um, just bringing it to the forefront. And to go along with that a little bit, um, you know, again, if that was something that was a visual, that was visible, then that would remind us to be more deliberate about that in our conversations. I think that the values that we discussed tonight are, are always in the, the uh, forefront of everything that we do and every decision we make are made on the values that we discussed tonight and I think that's very important as we move our school forward, as we move our staff forward because we are here for our students, for our, for our community and I think that bringing those values back in and revisiting them over uh, quite often I would say is very important in how we communicate our mission for our schools. Ditto. I mean, I, you guys have said it all. I don't need to add to that. But I was just thinking about when I'm at a school and I see one of you doing your job and looking across seeing Kelly Crosby at the beginning of school when seven or 800 kids are walking in the door and she knows all their names and greets them and says something personalized to each one of them. I just sit there and go, how the heck do you do that? And uh, I'm amazed. So, I think that our visibility is is an everyday occurrence, whether it's a teacher or a student or a maintenance worker, a school board person. And I think our aim should be to have more parents be a part of that. The, the visibility in supporting the schools and supporting the children and supporting the mission so that it is truly a Scarborough school. Parents have to be part of it if we're going to be successful. A photo of this would do it, I think. question. So the Quilts Project is about the vision for Scarborough as a community. And what I'm hearing you say, or what I, what I think I'm hearing you say, is you're making a connection to the values that you have and possibly the vi also the vision that you have for the Scarborough community. So that might be, that might be true for some folks, that your values also are, are incorporated in your vision. Um, and what we're going to be doing is taking these value statements, so Kelly's been capturing them from your cards and what you said, and of course we'll go back and we'll watch the video to refine this. And the goal is that we'll be able to pull these statements together so that we can have some collective commitments. Um, like yes, these are individual passions and core beliefs that each of us have, but many of them have common themes as we talked about, the equity, the access, the inclusion, um, making sure that we you know, keeping all students in mind. Um, and so those are things that we're going to want to put into our value statements. And then the second part of that is to say we value this and therefore we commit to this. And that gets to what Mike was saying about living these values every day, that they should be present in the work that we do. I think, Jackie, you said it too, being visible. Um, and I invite you to think about how could you use this activity to help solidify our mission, our vision, 
the values in your schools or in your departments and in the work that you do as we navigate through this work. Because what becomes tricky in public schools very quickly is that we have so much work to do, right? And we're constantly task driven. And so I like what David Courier said about checking back and checking in and putting these at the forefront of our thinking and being really intentional about what we believe and then also then committing to um, specific behaviors that support these things so that all of this work starts to make sense. Um, and that it brings speed to our work as well. Because if we're focusing on building those relationships, like many of you said, that's how we're going to bring trust to the work. If we engage our parents and our community, like our student-centered vision says, and they have a chance to express their values about Scarborough Public Schools, um, then they're going to be more committed. They're going to trust our decisions more. And so we want to bring the community into this work so that our goals can become realized. And so that not only do we meet our goals, but we're able to exceed our goals. And I truly believe that this foundational work, sometimes people fast forward through this in organizations, or they just look at what other people have done and they say, yep, we like that, sure, like put that on our website. But to me, it's the conversations I heard you all having. It's those interactions and the smiles and the laughter that I heard as you were cultivating your values here and making your values a reality, not just something that you say is important to you as a member of this district. So in our work, we're constantly trying to assess where are we today, but where are we trying to go? And the goal is to create that creative tension, right? between where we are and where we're going. And we don't want it to get too tense and too taut, and we don't want it to be too loose and flimsy. And so we're constantly trying to find that balance in the work that we do um, as the leaders in the district. And so the last thing I want to do is just debrief with you a little bit about this experience. What did you think of it? Why would you do it? Did you find it frustrating? Did anything surprise you? And how might you use It Takes a Village at your building or in your department or at your next parent meeting um, to, to share this experience if you found value in it? And I put all five questions up there for anyone who feels that they'd like to answer them. No one's on the spot, but um, what do you think? What do you think about this activity? I think the first thing that it demonstrates is that leaders lead. And when leaders lead, they let others do the work. And I don't mean that in any derogatory sense. I mean it has to be participatory. And it has to be participatory in the kindergarten classroom and the high school classroom and every other place we meet to educate our children and each other. Anyone else want to reflect on the activity tonight? Um, I think it's really powerful to have everybody stand up and individually state their their passion, their vision, their commitment, even if you all know how somebody feels to hear somebody stand up in front of a group, it can be very powerful. So even with the staff who knows each other very well, it can be reinforcing and powerful for them. Um, I'm not sure I'd be ready to do this before we get into the mission and some of the other pieces first. I think that's important to share with the staff first before you get to this. So this pro progression of it. Uh, I, I think for me what it did was it really forced me to think deeply about my value. I brought my value, but I really didn't think about how to describe it in a different way, in a different medium. So I had to really take that thinking and really had to figure out how to communicate it in a different way so it stretched my thinking and deepened my thinking and had me questioning about my value. Do I really believe this? How can I display this in a different, almost in a different language? 
Uh, so it forced that. The other piece was I was I was engaged, and I was really curious about what everyone else was doing. And that would be because I wanted to see it as well as hear it. I think if we all showed up with our note cards and just read them off, I'm not sure I would have heard to the level of, I wouldn't have had the same stamina for listening, but I was watching and figuring it out how that visual was connected to what I was hearing. Um, so, yeah. We needed more blue. <laughs> <laughs> Noted. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, <clears throat> I think that this activity was very important because a lot of these ideas have a lot of abstract concepts to them. And, you know, being able to visualize these concepts is really important because that's how I think people best understand what they're being told about through a more visual, more physical way than just something that's just an idea. Last slide. I want to thank you for your endurance. It's been a very long day. Our Leadership Council also tested out our first afternoon Leadership Council meeting that we plan to have before every school board workshop. So thank you for your engagement throughout the evening tonight. We will capture all of the images um, with photographs as well as, as your um, written values that you shared. Um, and then, of course, it will come back to this group for further fee uh, feedback and input, and um, we'll be using that support of the technical writer to help us kind of streamline it in you know, quick, concise, precise language that um, is really clear to our many audience members. So thank you all. Yeah. Yeah. I just wanted to say thank you because I know it was a long day for all of you um, and I just again want to say how much I love the inclusion of essential operations on this because even just today I mean sometimes well for school board members if this isn't our full-time job so we have to sit in meetings where we can where we're running in between places and we have our kids with us sometimes like Ben Shea was at finance with us on Monday night doing his math homework I ran and got my son Cormac today who just turned 12. He's got a bad cold and he was in the waiting area of central office while I was in a, in a meeting with the door closed and when I came out he's like, everybody here is so nice and I know it was Kelly, getting him snacks, <laughs> getting him tissues, offered him drinks and he just told everyone about it when he got home. He said, they're so nice there. They're, I mean, and so most kids don't, have, are not there but it all just goes to show you that everyone is for kids and doing the parts that they can so we can do the jobs that we need to. So thank you for that, Kelly, and everyone else that does so much for all of us. Um, okay. I hope he invites his friends over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you guys should really hang out in Central Office. They have snacks and tissues. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hang out after school. They can't get home. All right. So 8.0, don't have a motion. Uh, Move chairman. Yeah. yeah. Second. Uh, all in favor? <laughs> we have we a new assistant superintendent. Yes, we do. So here well, we go. Thank you so much, leadership. Thank you. And students. This isn't.